Hi guys, this is Rob from the Facebook Myocardial Bridge Support Group. Here's another myth about myocardial bridges. It's the myth that your bridge is too short or too shallow to cause symptoms. And this is both a myth in itself, but it's also a misleading statement. Uh, because bridges, myocardial bridges are often underestimated. They often have no idea how long it really is. We'll get to that in a second. But for the myth part that your myocardial bridge is too short and or too shallow to cause symptoms, um, it is, at the end of the day, I'll just say it in a nutshell, it really doesn't matter how long your myocardial bridge or how shallow it is. It, it doesn't, I mean, it, it's probably... There's typically a correlation with a longer myocardial bridge causing more symptoms, but not always. I'll give you an example. We have a site that on, on our site. Um, there was a guy from, I think, Belgium who was a cyclist. He had this very long myocardial bridge. It was five or six centimeters or something like that. He went in and the doctors found it. He wasn't even complaining about anything. He didn't have any symptoms. <laughs> he, he wouldn't even recognize it. They just told him and they said, we're not going to sign your permission slip for the next cycling race until you get surgery for this. So you had to have surgery for his myocardial bridge on roofing surgery. Okay. But no symptoms, six centimeter bridge. By contrast, there are people with massive symptoms from bridges that are two centimeters or on our site, less than two centimeters, which have had surgery at Stanford. There's a guy in a study from China who had a one centimeter myocardial bridge reported crushing chest pain, had to have surgery, he collapsed, okay? So on the one hand, we have people with one or nearly two centimeter myocardial bridges having massive symptoms. Somebody else had five, six centimeter myocardial bridge, didn't even know they had it, just went for a routine checkup and it showed up. So length is not the barometer. Uh, what about depth? Same thing. Uh, typically, yes, there is generally a correlation between a deeper bridge and more symptoms. But in the words of Dr. Boyd, which is the, the he's the surgeon for myocardial bridges at Stanford, he's probably done, uh, it's safe to say, more standalone unroofing surgeries than any other human being in the history of Earth. <laughs> uh, he's done over, I think, 200 now. He said uh, to me, uh, even a very thin myocardial bridge can wreak havoc, okay? Even a paper thin band of muscle, okay? Because at the end of the day, um, a good analogy would be this. Think of it like a garden hose, okay? And, and a, that's your artery. And then the myocardial bridge is like a foot stepping on the garden hose, right? So when the water is supposed to be flowing through, you step on the hose and it gets squashed. So the water doesn't get through as much, right? You lose blood flow that's going to go off into your septal arteries, into your heart. But now think about this a second. Okay, so if you're, they're saying your bridge is too short or too uh, shallow to cause symptoms. Okay, well, what would that mean? Well, imagine if, can a, can a foot be too short? Can a foot be too narrow to squash, an, to squash a garden hose? In other words, why would the width of the foot matter as to whether or not it can or can't squash a garden hose? Why would the width of that foot even be an issue. Would a wider foot uh, crush the garden hose more, assuming it was the same pressure? Yes, but that's assuming it was the same pressure. Okay, so, I mean, you could have a foot that's, uh, you know, you could have someone's foot that be this big, <laughs> be like a centimeter wide or as wide as a, a pencil, and you could still theoretically imagine it squashing down on that garden hose really, really hard. Okay. So it's just a function of how hard is that band of muscle squashing the artery. That's what's cutting off the blood flow. And at the same at the same time, you could also imagine a foot, someone's foot stepping on a garden nose. If that foot was very wide, would it matter? You know, would it would it, would it make a difference? Well, someone could just tap lightly on the garden nose and not have much compression. Or someone could pound on the garden hose with that wide foot and have a lot of compression, right? It, the width of the foot, uh, yeah, it makes it, amplifies it if you are at a certain pressure, but it's not the main barometer, okay? So doctors are often out there telling patients, um, like we're talking about hundreds of patients on our site, your myocardial bridge is too short or too shallow 
to cause symptoms. And I would argue it doesn't, that's, uh, you know, that that's just not true. <laughs> it, it's it, short and shallow are not the barometers for the symptoms of a myocardial bridge. Um, another thing about that, which is important to know, is that if your bridge was truly too short to cause symptoms, right? Like if it was physically impossible, which I don't measure there is, because I think even a, a, a wire could squash an artery, um, they wouldn't be talking about it. In other words, it wouldn't even show up on your report, okay? Because a lot of myocardial bridge on autopsies are teeny weeny little, you know, middle school ones. They, they would often not even put it on the report. It would be so small um, or even be noticed or recognized by the radiologist. Okay. In other words, to put it backwards, if they even put it on the report, if your doctor is even uh, alerting you to the fact that it exists, or it's even on the report that it exists, your doctor doesn't even say it sometimes, doesn't even tell you, but it's there on the paper. It's an indication that it's potentially big enough to cause symptoms. Okay. Now, just to be clear, uh, before anybody, I can hear an objection say, well, are you telling people that you know whether they have symptoms or not? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that uh, a myocardial bridge can cause you symptoms, okay? At almost any width, uh, at any length and any depth, right? It can cause symptoms depending on how much pressure is being put on that artery by the band of muscle. Okay, which is a function of a lot of things, of the heart itself, the size of the heart, the physiology, the particular uh, location along the heart where it falls. It's, you know, it, it's many, many things. The physics of it, really. Okay, so you might be wondering, well, so what is the gauge of my symptoms? And those, the, the, the much better gauge of symptoms is uh, the DFFR or IFR, not FFR not FFR, DFFR, or IFR, and also the patient's symptoms, right? Is the patient having pain, et cetera, faintness, dizziness, pain on the left arm, left side, left chest? Okay, those are the things, the, the DFFR and the IFR. The DFFR and IFFR, IFR, excuse me, if you're not familiar, basically are measuring how much of a percentage of, of, of a fraction of the blood going into the myocardial bridge comes out the other side. Right, because without the myocardial bridge, it will be the the percentage will be a hundred, meaning the blood goes in, the blood goes out. It's just the same amount of blood goes in as goes out. Um, but with DFFR or IFR, those tests are measuring okay, this much, hundred percent of the blood goes into the myocardial bridge, but it's blocking some of it, right? And so some percentage comes out, seventy percent, fifty percent, eighty percent, whatever it might be. Okay, so. Those things uh, really have a much better way of measuring the effects of the myocardial bridge. Okay, so we have to, uh, you know, many places, including Stanford and, and the best of them, you know, for a long time tried to figure out these formulas for um, multiplying, you know, length times uh, depth and all this stuff, and trying to figure out if there was some formulaic way where you could pinpoint a way of calculating whether there's going to be symptoms or not. And at the end of the day, um, the answer was, no, that's not really, neither length or depth is really the true barometer, the true gauge for symptoms, okay? So um, if your doctor is telling you that your bridge is, too long, is not long enough or not shallow enough to cause symptoms, um, you should just say in your mind, just say, well, that's just not true because we, do, we don't know yet. We don't know yet unless we know the IFR, DFFR, uh, and compression percentage, stuff like that. That's what can tell you much better. The second part of that uh, is that myocardial bridges can be un vastly underestimated. It's very common to underestimate the depth and the length. So not only is it a myth that depth and length are the, the barometers, the, the uh, cr criteria for whether a bridge causes symptoms or not, that's a myth, but it's even I guess a myth that they even really know how long it is because you cannot, you can't get depth from a CT scan because Stanford has said that you cannot gauge depth from a CT scan, cannot period, end of story. Um, you could try to gauge depth from a uh, cardiac catheterization and even there, um, even the best uh, centers often underestimate or just misestimate. 
And case in point, like I said, um, there's a lady on our site who was told by her local doctor originally that she had a one centimeter myocardial bridge, which was insignificant and she was not the source of her problems. She persisted, she didn't give up. She went to another doctor. They said, oh no, actually not one, it's two centimeters. Oh, and then they referred her to uh, Chicago, which then found that, Chicago found that it was six centimeters during surgery. Okay, so magically it went from one to two to six centimeters. That's pretty big jump, right? So you can see that um, you have to take it with uh, more than a grain of salt when a, when a, when a doctor tells you um, that your myocardial bridge is not causing issues because it's too short or too deep, okay? That's just another myth. Um, and there's others on our website and the Frequently Asked Questions document. I hope to see you there.